good, my amazing friends? I am Sarah Grace, and you are tuned into The Remedy. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to a new week. Um, same old precious God and same old me. <laughs> Here we are still uh, plugging it out every week. All right. So anyway, welcome back. I love hanging out with you guys. <laughs> Last week's show was so incredible. If you haven't watched it yet, head on over to the archive library and watch the show with Jamie Gooch, the interview that we did regarding uh, the movie Hocus Pocus and um, uh, ha Halloween and about... Um, you know, standing in the authority of uh, Jesus. Oh my gosh, what an incredible, incredible show. Um, I've, I've received so many messages, uh, so, so much feedback online from people, from you guys. Um, absolutely loving it, but also some witches jumping on and throwing curses towards us for, um, you know, exposing this stuff. And, you know, it's been a wild ride this week. I'm telling you what, but oh my gosh, you know, that's the thing when you stir the pot or stir that cauldron as the case may be with the truth and you shine light on the dark corners, what is going to happen is craziness is sometimes going to ensue. You're going to stir things up. And that's what happened when you're law, you know, logging, uh, arrows over and they're, they're hitting the intended target. You're going to make waves and, um, and you're going to hear about it. So anyway, uh, all that to say, be glorified, Lord, that is what this show is all about. As you guys know, um, this is not for my glory. It is not for the glory of any guests that I have on. It is for the glory of God and the good of his people. And so anyway, today, <laughs> that leads me to today's show. And today, you guys, guess what? We have another guest. <laughs> That's right. Another guest that wanted to be on the remedy with us. And that's incredible. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> like, anyway, I'm blessed, you guys. I'm so blessed. And so, you know what? Let's just get into it. Hey, my amazing friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Today, you guys, um, I am bringing you this amazing book. It's called I Can Hear His Voice. And our guest today is the author of this book. Amazing. I'm going to put all of the information in the description links below. But we have um, Shayla Ortiz Diaz. And Shayla, she is a minister in the prophetic. And she moves in the gifts of the Holy Spirit which is just absolutely incredible. Shayla has been um, featured on the 700 Club um, on uh, many, many other shows recently. She was, she's going to be or has been on Grace Grace. And, um, you know, uh, I just, I really just want to have you guys um, learn from her and her experience with the gifts of the spirit and hearing the voice of the Lord. You know, so often we get, um, we ask, you know, how do we know that we're hearing the voice of the Lord? How do I even hear the voice of the Lord? Does the Lord speak to me? Uh, you know, is it just voices in my head? What is the difference? What is the difference? And moving in the gifts of the spirit, moving in the Holy spirit, it, it's a whole, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit. It's a whole thing. And um, I, we are so blessed. Shayla, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sarah, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be with you and The Remedy. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. We are, are super um, excited. And your book, your book is amazing. And you guys, if you want some incredible encouragement. If you want to read uh, an incredible story of how the Lord um, has moved in a mighty way in Shayla's life, I cannot recommend this book enough. It's going to blow your mind. Um, and uh, Shayla, will you tell us a little bit about what led you to, well, write this book, your experience a little bit. Give us a little overview, if you would, about your book. 
Well, the book is about, it, there's two sections in the book. Um, and the first section speaks about um, some basic ideas of how to hear the voice of God. So we get into the most common ways of um, hearing the voice of God. And we speak about how to yield to the voice of God. Because in order for the Lord to continue to speak to you, you have to respond. And so the way that we respond to the Lord is different based upon how the Lord is speaking to you. So mm -hmm. we get into that. And then as a matter of illustration, I speak about the story that illustrates um, how God speaks to an individual on a daily basis. And it, it goes through the path of how we, uh, my mother and I, survived through two hurricanes uh, five years ago. Yeah, and the book is set uh, during um, some, well, hurricane the hurricane um in in puerto rico yeah hurricane uh, maria and hurricane irma yes and uh you know as a united states country we are aware of just the catastrophic damage that happened to mm -hmm. um uh you know puerto rico um but this book uh shayla recounts her experience in those storms and how <laughs> The voice of the Lord is what led her and her family to safety and, uh, you know, repairing things and, you know, moving Provision. from one building to it's it's absolutely it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. But also it's faith building. It's so encouraging to know that, you know, this uh, I, I in in my prayer life this week have really been um, uh kind of focusing on or getting to um, worship um, Jehovah Roy, you know, our God who sees and that our, our God, God really does see us and sees every, every part, every piece, even the, what we think is the most minute. And so Shayla, I just want to um, kind of turn the floor over to you so that you can, you know, teach us. Thank you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> well, um, I guess the most important thing that the Lord has always asked me to share is that hearing the voice of God is not reserved, reserved for people who are in platforms, for people who have big ministries, uh, who are on television. Uh, hearing the voice of God is reserved for every child of God. Amen. And um, getting... To hear the voice of God is as simple as asking God for that. We can come to the Lord uh, knowing that if we ask something, that he will give us that. And wow. we can come to the Lord with um, just peace in our heart that it's his will that we come close to him. His word says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And so when I get up in the morning, for example, one of the ways that I get close to God, and I do that, I draw near to him, is that I invite him into every situation of my life. And I always keep a heart of thankfulness because that's what the word says. Yes, an attitude of gratitude. To, an attitude of gratitude and thankfulness. So in all things, I mean, first thing in the morning, good morning, Lord. And I bring him into every situation. I share my thoughts. I share my concerns. I share my joys. Everything in my life is, is, is an ongoing communication with the Lord. And that's how you become close to him. Another yeah. way that you become close to the Lord in the single most important way is to stay in his word. Um, so we read the Bible, and for moms or dads, people that are out there that are busy, if you can't read it, listen to it. Turn on uh, an app on the phone and, and listen to it. But you need to feed your spirit, because one of the ways that the Lord speaks is through his word in the Bible. And sometimes when you hear the audible voice of God, he speaks to you with scripture. So 
that's one of the ways that he talks. And if you're familiar with scripture, you can pick up on it and then go look it up and, oh, wait, he's trying to tell me this or he's trying to show me that. Yeah. So um, that is another way that the Lord speaks. Um, through the book, I go through uh, different ways, uh, listening to the word, um, the still small voice, which is not always such a still small voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most people um, can identify with still small voice. Yeah. Um, they've, they've heard it before. And yes, he does speak to you um, in that way. But sometimes, especially when there's emergencies, he's quick and stern in the way he'll speak to you. Um, so you may catch, like I, I was sharing with Sarah yesterday, I said, um, my husband was having surgery and, uh, all of a sudden I hear the Lord say, pray. So when you yield to the voice of God, two things very important. Number one, you need to be obedient and react. Number two, you need to follow instructions. At that particular point, the Lord did not say, call everybody so that everybody can pray. He didn't say, look up scriptures. He said, pray. In that mm. very moment, you stop what you're doing and you do as the Lord says. Yeah. So obedience is a very big component of growing in, the, uh, in that, in learning how to hear the voice of God. Dreams, we've spoken about dreams. The Lord... Um, speaks to all of us through dreams even mm -hmm. people that are not saved will get dreams yeah uh, like the pharaoh and and like you see in the bible in many examples yeah there's several um, dream examples yeah and that's yeah. one way that the lord speaks to me very often is dreams dreams so with regards to dreams um dreams have symbols uh which if you record your dreams not only do you have the benefit of, of having a, a, a record of what the Lord says, but you can learn to identify the symbols that are unique to you that the Lord will give you through dreams. And, um, and, and the dreams are not always for now, as we see with the story of Joseph mm -hmm. in the Bible. Some dreams are for the future. You get a glimpse of what is to come. Because the Lord never does anything in people's lives without preparing you first. Right. So through dreams, um, he may be able to give you an insight of what's to come or decision making or um, he'll reveal to you things that are hidden that you need to work through and so far and so on. Um, another way that the Lord speaks is through visions. There's different kinds of visions. Mm -hmm. um, um, you could see, you could see just an image. You could see um, words, like I've had um, visions where it's just words. Um, you can have something that starts off like completely black screen, and then it sort of slowly develops into an image, kind of like a Polaroid. Um, then there's visions where, like the ones in the book of Revelation, where there's an interaction between the individual that's having a vision and what's going on and what the Lord is revealing, uh, and so on. So let's see what else. Leading. Uh, the most um, important example that they have about leading in the Bible is when the Lord was, when Jesus was led into the desert. The word actually speaks about that, led. There are other examples in the Bible where the Lord leads people in one way or another. And that's, in my opinion, the best way to practice or one of the best ways to practice because um, it's easy. When you speak to God, all you do is you ask him a question and you expect an answer. And the answer is going to come in any kind of ways. And it doesn't come necessarily at that moment but if we know that the lord is going to respond then we have an expectation in our heart that we're going to hear from him and um, i like to practice leading because 
when I lose things, I just ask the Lord. It's like, Lord, where is this? Mm -hmm. And he'll actually show me. Uh, so I just follow along as the Lord leads and and find whatever it is. And there's other ways, tugging um, in some other ways. Yeah. So do you, do you find um, in your uh, teaching and, um, you know, really in your study and even in your, your life, that God speaks to people differently and in different ways? Or do you think that God always speaks to everyone in all the ways? For example, in my life, um, God has spoken to me audibly, but only a uh, very few times. There's, um, they, they've been moments where I needed to have my attention brought immediately to a, like with your husband's surgery now, you know, and I've heard, uh, almost a life saving moment, if you will. But for the most part, for me, the Lord speaks to me either in the still small voice, some would maybe call that, oh, it's, you know, your own intuition inside, but it's not, <laughs> it's the Lord, it's the leading of the Lord. It, once you, once you know your master's voice, right. Okay. Um, uh, but anyway, that's for me, uh, kind of how the Lord, um, uh, speaks to me or what I call a spiritual download. <laughs> I get, um, information that's just brought to me. Like I think, you know, Lord, I need information about a show and, or, or I need, I need, you know, whatever, uh, it is. And all of the sudden I'll know, I'll know the answer immediately. I'll know that. And I call it a spirit, my, Oh, I got a spiritual download, yeah. which sounds wild, but, and it is kind of wild, but I guess when you're moving in the spiritual realm and not just focusing on the temporal, but, you know, on the eternal as well, then you realize that, you know, we're spiritual beings having a human experience and not the other way around. But um, back to my question is, you know, does everyone hear God the same or does God speak to each of us, you know, uniquely? Yes, he speaks to everybody differently. And like I mentioned, like, for example, with the uh, symbols in dreams and in visions, you really have symbols and visions that are unique to you. Um, another thing is that, I've, at least in my experience, when the Lord was trying to teach me to yield to different areas, different um, gifts of the Holy Spirit, or different ways of hearing Him, He kind of focuses in on that. And then when you become really good at it, then He kind of starts another way of, of showing you. It's a progression, and the progression depends very much on how much you desire the gifts, how much you seek the Lord in those areas. And in that download that you mentioned, notice that that starts with, Lord, I need yes. to have something to speak. So it's it's a request on your part that he's yeah. answering in that way. Yeah, yes, you know, absolutely, I I mean, there's a, there's a reason that we're called to pray. We're, we're meant to have a relationship and a relationship just as our conversation is today. It's a, a, a give and a take. It's there's, there is a conversation that happens. And, um, I've, I've had people ask me, well, why, why do we need to pray? If God knows all of our needs, why do we need to pray? Well, I don't know, you know, why do you need to have a conversation with anybody? Because you have a relationship with them <laughs> and having, you know, a prayer life is having a constant conversation with someone that you have a very deep relationship with. So, All right. um, uh, anyway, um, well, another, another reason why we need to pray is because in mostly, uh, I mean, you can pray in your mind and stuff because the Lord knows what you need before you ask him. Um, like you said, but um, something happens in the spirit when we speak these things. That is the um, the way the Lord has taught us that we need to speak. That is why the scriptures are very clear about to be careful with the things that we say with our mouths because things happen in the spirit as things are spoken. Yeah, and we've talked about that here on the podcast. We have actually an episode called The Life and Death is in the Tongue because life and death really is in the tongue. And, um, you know, you're, 
the words are powerful. Words are incredibly powerful. That's, you know, one of the reasons we put a string of letters together and we call it spelling, right? Is that there is power in, uh, you know, what we, what we say. And so absolutely on that same, you know, vein of what you're, what you're sharing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience um, with, um, well, so what led you to uh, first write the book? When I was writing the book, um, it really did not start out as a book. It actually started out as uh, entries in my personal journal, in my Christian journal. In that journal, I record Everything, um, everything that I hear from the Lord, my dreams, my visions. Um, Any time the Lord speaks, I run and write it down because I want to honor him in that way. If he takes the time to share something with me, whether it's a word of comfort or instructions or whatever it is, I want to honor him by recording that. And it's a source of comfort. When I come back in the future and look at that, there's times when I have to go back and refer to those things. But back to the book. When we were going through the hurricanes, a lot of those things were written in paper because there was no electricity. So I didn't have the use of my laptop, which is where I normally record those things. So when I got back into my home many weeks later, I started transcribing my notes my handwritten notes, uh, into the journal. And as I did that, the Lord started to open my eyes and reveal. There were things that I noticed right there, right on the time. But the biggest revelation that I had during that period as I was transcribing my notes was that before those things took place, the things that I experienced during the hurricanes, God had a period of my life that was strictly preparation for that hurricane. I was facing a storm. And the Lord knew that I had to face a storm. And in a dream, he revealed to me that I was not prepared. That there were areas where there was open doors. And uh, and open windows. And, um, and so... When the Lord revealed that to me, I went on a quest. It's like, what doors are open? What windows are open? What is it that I have that it's not safety? And by the way, I had a dream with a storm. So I knew there was a storm coming. Um, so when I came back, the Lord revealed to me that there was preparation period. In, and that's, I think, one of the best parts of the book. Um and he also revealed to me that there were lessons that were taught during that period of time. As you walk through this, this is what I was teaching you. And that wow. was so amazing. And I decided to, so I, I started writing the journal and, and transcribing my notes. But from there, he said, no, you need to write the book and you need to share about the miracles that I did. Because he did a couple of miracles. It was like three miracles that the Lord did during that time. And they're amazing miracles. And um, and then finally, um, as I was thinking about the book, I'm, I thought, what good is it to share the testimony if I can share with people how to do that for themselves? And that's what led to the first part of the book, which is the teaching section. The goal is to teach people some general ideas of how to listen to the voice of God and then see it illustrated as they read the story. So, And then the reflections at the end of each chapter are, are a way to invite people into, into, into doing that for themselves. How do I do this? Well, this is how you do it. Reflect on this. Reflect on that. Yeah, and I loved that about your book, that it really gave real instruction to, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are really like, how do I exercise these muscles? I mean, we have personal trainers out there who help you, you know, get to the gym and do what we need to do. That's, that's right. But 
you know, your book is like a personal training book. Okay. How many reps do I need to do? I mean, not really, but you know, (laughs) you give people the instruction that they need so that they're not just out there floating going, okay, I have my Bible. How do I, you know, what do I do next Lord? And I just, I'm really, uh, really thankful that you broke your book down like that, that, you know, I just, it's not just a story on the page, but it brings the reader, the person, the, the student into as in interactive. And I, I really appreciated uh, that part of your book very much. So, yeah, those were all instructions from the Lord. It's, it's, it developed very, very slowly in many, uh, and it actually was a book that was, um, it took three years wow. to finish. Three years because there was a lot of opposition. And thankfully, um, a person came into my life who, who encouraged me to finish it. And he said, no. Well, I was writing my thesis for my master's degree. And, and one of the instructors said, no, that's what you need to do for your thesis. This is, you have to finish this book. That's what the Lord wants. And thankfully, the Lord brought that person in my life for, for that. Wow, right on. Okay, so uh, as we're kind of nearing the end of, of this podcast, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, hearing the voice of the Lord and the ways that the Lord can speak to you. But um, are, are there some bullet point takeaways that that you would give um, those watching right now or listening uh, on our our listening platforms what can people do today to begin to exercise those uh, the credentials <laughs> to exercise uh, those those muscles to hear the Lord well first of all you need to have the confidence to know that the word says clearly, that my, my sheep hear my voice. Yes. So you're God's sheep. You can hear his voice. Um, the Lord communicates in different ways. Um, the word has a specific scripture that applies to many things, but ask, seek, knock. So you ask the Lord. Everything that you do unto the Lord or with the Lord begins with a question on your part, giving him permission to act in your life on your behalf in that area. So you ask the Lord, say, Father, I want to get close to you. I want to know how to hear your voice. And it's that simple. And then you start expecting an answer because he will answer. When the Lord answers to you, you need to um, respond. There are different ways to respond. Um, When the Lord speaks to you, we need to be obedient to do as he says. And there's going to be times when the Lord will ask you to do things that sound kind of okay, but it's not <laughs> It's not about that as much as it is your obedience into doing as he says. As you learn the process, you're going to doubt yourself. Am I really hearing God or not? God speaks through. Very often, especially when he starts talking to you, you're just going to hear scripture. Uh, one word, several words a whole scripture, whichever way it is. Um, He really likes to speak that way. Um, Let me see what else. Um, So worship, prayer, and being in the word. Absolutely. That is a, a, I mean, we already have many, many, but an entire library that we call the Bible (laughs) of the Lord speaking. And he very often Always, anytime you open the word, he's going to speak to you through his word. It's a living, living word. And it's, it, you know, the word of God is going to come into your life and into your heart when you're, Correct. when you're in, in the, in the word. I love that too. I love that. I love One that. One last thing. Um, it's easy to doubt whether or not you're hearing from God, but when you're hearing from God, you will never hear something that's contrary to what the Bible says. Yes. Yes. That is that is very important. And when you're as you're learning, it's okay to ask God, Father, I don't understand this. I need more information or help me understand. And mm-hmm. He will take you either somewhere in the Bible or He'll send someone on your path or you'll have a dream, whichever way He chooses to speak to you. 
um, that will give you the answers. So true. I mean, that's it. You know, God's word doesn't return void. The Bible doesn't return void. And when he speaks to you, he doesn't, um, well, he doesn't leave you hanging. <laughs> yeah. You will get explanation for that. And you, just like you were talking about dreams, sometimes we have a dream and the dream is from the Lord and we don't understand what the dream is um, uh, always, uh, maybe not in the, the moment, but at some point that interpretation is going to come. And I like how you talk about making sure you're writing them down so that when the interpretation comes, you say, Oh, okay. That's, that's what that, that's what that meant, you know? And, uh, in, you know, in my life, the Lord has brought, uh, often the interpretation later after, um, um, you know, after a time has passed and I don't, know the interpretation right away. So, um, uh, yeah, God will always make known what is the next step in, in the process too. And you guys, as we close out today, thank you to Shayla. I'm so, um, so blessed Shayla that you came onto the podcast and that you were able to share such wisdom with, with us. It's, um, we just, we appreciate it so much hearing from the Lord uh, to know that God is real, that we're not just floating out here in the ether with, with no direction, you know, and that, you know, God doesn't care. He's sitting, you know, somewhere up on his cloud and he couldn't care, you know, that that's, that that's not real. What is real is that, that Jehovah sees us and that he is our provider and he is the Prince of peace and that, you know, the word and he is our covering and, you know, he is our banner, you know, all, all of the things he is all of the things. And, um, I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much again, Shayla. And, um, you guys, I just want to, um, again, talk really quickly about the, stepping stones, like Shayla had said, uh, in her experience, right? Shayla, that, that maybe you don't get everything all at once, but one learning experience will build on the next and build on the next. And, right. um, you know, so if you're in the middle of toiling in a situation and you think, oh gosh, down the road, this is what I want to be doing, but I want to be doing that right now or God's called me to do this, but I don't know why it's not working. I'm not quite there yet. It's because God is building the stepping stones in your life that you need to get to the next step, the next step, the next step. And if you were to jump, you know, frog jump from this step all the way to the end, God knows that you probably would fail. And he doesn't, God's not a God of failure. He is, um, you know, a God of completion and he is faithful to complete the work that he began in you and in me and in you, Shayla. So you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me again this week. And as always, I love you guys. And until next week, peace. Peace.